Hi, hi. Okay, we're getting the TikTok set up. Hopefully it's going. Okay. All right, getting set. Okay, all right, we're ready to go. Today should be a good day. All right, oh, let me get out of the cart. Okay, all right. Notifying viewers, blah, blah, blah. Okay, skip ahead. Sami Zayn Forever shirt. If you're in wrestling or like WWE wrestling, you know you know. Okay, so I've got, hi there, Kim. Hi, hi Roxanne. Hi, I have the red fairy tarot in my hand. I'm gonna show you a few of those. They are really pretty. They're a little bit dark in the picture, but really, really pretty. So this is what we've got going on. And I have a couple of new decks that I'm gonna be busting out today. Good morning, Katie. Ish, good morning. So they're really quite gorgeous. So if you've got a few questions, this is the part of the show where I do a few like three cards for free, see what's going on. Just a few quick questions. I usually do three of those and we get into the paid list right away. So that's what's going on. I hope everybody's doing good. Yesterday I built a little bit of furniture with my daughter. Tomorrow I might build furniture with my friend. So it's like, ugh. Okay. So trying to build a day bed and get that. But yeah, they are kind of dark. They're like almost like a, they're dark as far as the art quality. And they're a little bit dark as far as the nature of them. So this one's a little bit brighter. Hopefully you can see that a little bit more. Hey there, lovely princess. Hey. But there's something um, epic heroic type thing. They're called the red fairy cards. Okay. All right. So if you've got some questions, let me know. I can show you the quick look at the list. This is what we do. We have the blind oracle for 20. You don't ask a question. You get the read you need. You know the drill. Of the year ahead. We have the one question, mini one question, full and specialty reads here. This is how you get on the paid list. And we start the show off with a few um, quick questions. Yeah, they are bold. They're super bold, Katie, really bold. And I have more than 620 now, Kim. So sorry to tell you. I haven't done the count recently, but I did have to get a few little more card containers. So, okay, Roxanne Lynn, will Chloe reach out to you? Let's see. We're going to take a little shuffle on these and see. Chloe, reach out to Roxanne soon. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. What we've got is this is not the right time. We've got the Five of Pentacles, where somebody feels definitely out in the cold. we got the Four of Wands, which is synchronicity, which is what you want. But what came out sideways between it? High Priestess. There's something that is not yet revealed. Sometimes this is just card of mystery or secrets. Sometimes it's a little bit of deception, but it's um, it came out this way and it felt very much this way. It felt kind of wonky. So I don't think so. Soon, I, I would think soon is like, I'm an impatient motherfucker, so maybe soon is like a week, but I don't think it's gonna be soon. That's what I'm getting for that. So that's what I've got. Good morning, Chad, good morning. Good to see you here. So yeah, that's what I've got for that one. I wish I could say different, but... Now all you can think is what? How can I be bold? You know what? Sometimes bold is the things we do to, we dare to do for ourselves. The things we dare to create for ourselves. The things that are, some people would say selfish, but I would say self-care that are all about us in such a good way that we are honoring us. So that's what I would say would be a great way to be bold. Let's see if this will go up now. Good morning, good morning, Chad. I hope things are going well for you. So, um, let's take a look. Uh, it is a good question. You know what? I have the, one of the new decks that I got was called the nine lives and it's all these cats. Let's look, let's see what they have to say about how we can be bold, how we can be bold. Cause that's a really good question. I mean, you can get the Angie bossiness, but let's get the cards, see what they're saying. What, what does spirit have to say about this? Woo. One of them down here wants to flip. Well, what in the hell is going on here? We have the Four of Wands and the Three of Wands. Now look at the difference. The Four of Wands, synchronicity, graduation, graduation, graduation. The Three of Wands, sitting around waiting. These are two of my favorite cards. This one, the Three of Wands, I call the Santa Fe Burger. 
the fat cat's waiting for the ships to come in. But let me shuffle these a little bit more and fan these a little more. These are fairly new and I've shuffled them some, I've edged them some, but with them coming up that close in sequence, I wanna, I wanna give it just a little bit more time. Hey, Steph, hey! <laughs> you haven't even had your coffee, Tess? Oh my gosh, get some coffee, it's okay, we'll wait for you, man. Oh, you know what, they have this store here. I don't know what it's called. It's mocha in this little kind of plasticky carafe, but oh my God, it is so, so good. And it's like this mocha thing and it's a cold coffee. I did not know I liked mocha that well. I haven't liked mocha since like Jamocha Almond Fudge at Baskin Robbins years ago. And it's like, okay. You wouldn't think it was years I'd gone without ice cream. Let's not get that confused. But yeah, holy cow. All right, now let's see what we've got. What else does Spirit need us to know to be bold? Let's get down in it. That one wants to come flying. This one wants to come flying. That one wants to come flying. Okay. I want one more. Yeah, that one. Okay. One second. Okay. Wait for the epiphany to drop. Sometimes when we're disturbed in our sleep, we need to get up and do something. We've got this at the end of the lot here. This is something some of us need more rest, need to take care of our rest, and need to get out of our head and worry less. Let's see what else is going on here. Okay, we have the King of Cups, beautiful, beautiful King of Cups. This is emotional detachment. This is nightmare. Ta -da! Sometimes we gotta sit a situation down. Six of Cups, Four of Cups, and the Nine of Pentacles. We gotta exit, exit stage left, get out of the thing, get out of whatever it is. It's um, buy your leave, take your leave, exit card, exit strategy. Sometimes we have to exit our own head, our own worries. And it has to be deliberate. If we know how that exit is, sometimes it'll come in the form of escapism, like watching some kind of TV, like I like Murder, She Wrote, that kind of thing, over and over until our brain can just go on autopilot. Sometimes it's journaling through something. Sometimes it's listening to music and letting our brain kind of be swept away in that way. But this is something about crossing the river towards something more peaceful, and this is the exit strategy. The King of Cups knows to detach from what? The mental anxiety. What's in the middle here? Universe offering some relief if we will just pivot our attention. This is huge. And then the Nine of Pentacles. Understand the, the luxury. You guys won't know this song. Um, it's a Streisand song. So my age is showing for sure. But it's about um, being alive. And it just talks about the greatness of being alive. And it's kind of more of like a love song, blah, blah, blah. But the, the lyrics that come through are, she says, being alive. And she really holds and belts that note on the on the note live and this is what it is this is the the greatness the glory the wonderfulness of just being here on the planet in this time we get so stressed out by all the big crazy crazy we don't need to be so stressed this is saying get the rest keep it simple bring it back to just being alive understand what it is that is joyful what gets you excited and woke up and hot damn let's go what gets you like that this is being bold. What is it you're meant to do and be here? Being alive is important. Some people aren't getting tomorrow. You recognize this, don't you? Being alive. Um, it is a hot mess down here. It's a planet of duality. We didn't sign up for easy, all right? This is not what we signed up for. We get to pivot. We get to redirect what we need to do. Exit out of something that is tripping up our mind. I move toward this luxury and feeling like we are blessed in the garden on the adventure. This is a very count your blessings kind of energy. And not just count the blessings, oh, I'm glad for my health. I will never tell anybody that. I will never tell anybody that. Count your blessings if you got a granola bar in your nightstand drawer so in the morning you don't have to wake your lazy ass out of bed. You eat your granola bar and it's like, ah, yeah, now I get to wake up. Count your blessings if you've got coffee to fix and coffee to have. If you found the wonderful Kahlua that's like, oh, or the mocha that's, oh, if you found that, this is what we've got. The being alive cards is saying, yeah, the cat of nine lives says, yeah, it's got another chance. It's got another chance. There is another tomorrow. But why not have this today? Why put it off? Why put it off? That's what I'm getting. That energy is coming through really forceful. Like, be grateful. Be happy. This is, um, this is a time where there's a lot of high energy going on. High dungeon? Yeah. High dungeon. High, high dungeon? High dungeon? Maybe? Yeah. Energy emotions are running high, but there is a sense of, for some of us, we've been drained, 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 and it's time to 
Get with it, folks. You're alive. You're here on the planet. You're meant to be doing something other than um, be bored. If you're bored, that's your problem. That's your doing. Figure it out. Figure it out. It's like when the kid says, I'm bored. And it's like, I'm not the entertainment committee. We are our own. Whatever we desire, we want to go towards. This is huge for us. The being alive is, uh, I, I'm not going to belt that, but it is a very beltable song. Look it up and look up the chorus. It's Strice and Being Alive. And who cares about the someone in the song? But if you have the being alive and you sing that, if you sing that really bold, yeah, it's being alive, that kind of thing. And it's big. I don't want to blast you guys because I don't know where your work sections are. But that's what's coming through. Kim is telling me Chris is on the blind. Okay, so the blind, guys, let's get to it. Krista, the blind. Oh my gosh, we've got some new Oracle cards in here. And two of them are very contrary Oracle decks. We're getting those out. With that much being alive going on, how can we not get the two of them out? There's this one, which is called The Happy Things. And it's like, sometimes we just need to focus on the happy things. And then we've got this one, when it's called, I don't like the title of it. It's called I Don't Care. It's when we need to let go. So what we're grateful for, what we need to let go for, Krista, we'll start here. Okay, and I'm going to flip this down, and I'll flip this other one, hopefully down gently so we can get it all still. All right. We've got 12 and 32. We've got family, and we've got, thank God, it's Friday. Hilarious. Hilarious. We've got the it's Friday today and family. So you might get a little overwhelmed. Maybe there's a bunch of the little buggers around. You can see all the bunnies here. There might be a lot of chaos that they create. They might be a little bit pesky. But this is something that's huge for you coming through. This is something to enjoy. And family could be also friends who are sisters from other mistresses. Also family too. So that is what's going on here. Friday and family. This is something coming in. That This is the be happy about these things. You know how our attitude changes just because it's Friday. It's a great day. What if we could con ourselves into doing that on Thursday and get two Fridays in a week? If somebody said, yeah, I got two Fridays for you this week, you'd be thrilled. Okay, the thing to let go and release, the thing to no longer worry about or no longer have a care for, or the way that this comes through. Slowly but surely is asking you to be patient with yourself. Let's see if I've got this so you can see it. Be patient with yourself as you go. And let's book in the other side and then I want to get into some of my other oracles. I want to give these a one more shuffle. It feels like they need it, so we're going for it. There's some kind of relief that needs to come through for you. A relief. Not just a release, but a relief. You're good enough as you are right now. This is a beautiful card. The deck is called the I Don't Care Oracle, but it really has a lot of things. You're good enough as you are right now. Release some of the need for perfection. The relief of, yeah, you're fine is important for you. Now we're going to go in. I want to see a little bit more. We're going into the Tattered Wings. This one reads Super Super Oracle. Okay, what does Krista need to know? What does she need relief from? The truth is you've navigated the dark woods. You've navigated your own dark night of the soul, found your own power, found your own strength. The seraphim power is coming through. This is something that is goddess energy. You need to look up to own your truth a little bit more. There's a huge amount of strength coming through for you. You need to celebrate the ancestry that's come through before. This is like day of the dead mixed with seraphim coming in. This is honor the death and transformation. This is where you're at, whether you realize it or not. Whether you might wobble in this energy is fine. Understand that you're there, you're there, you have been here, you have known this. This is something you have strength and you're ready to do. You can see something coming through. There's a vision coming through. There's a, a, light, bulb of a, a light bulb of an idea. I know that you don't see it here, but there's a light bulb of the idea bubbling up, brewing up, coming through, coming through. It's yet to unfold. Allow it to unfold in whatever way that it does. This is something that is um like the ocean, like the ocean, like the ocean. Okay. So this is asking me to tell you that you are on this earth, but you're also in the cosmic ocean and in the cosmic flow. We're going to tip this back up so I can boss you a little bit. So recently I bought this ocean drum that I love. And the thing is, if you try and move it too fast, 
if you get impatient and the drum you hold it sideways like this if you if you try and move too fast it sounds like a ruckus it doesn't sound like the ocean if you go very slow and very level very level you hear that ocean and pretty soon you're in this meditative state it's a fabulous fabulous thing to do so for you there's this you know when we see temperance and it's juggling and you get the figure eight on its side it's like yours is a back and forth energy back and forth energy you don't want just two steps forward you want like five steps forward and no steps back that's your level of impatience and i'm telling you snap out of it nobody gets five steps forward and no steps back that kind of thing is going to screw you up so what you want is just a gentle forward a gentle back think about um children when they're first learning to walk or think about if you're walking you see somebody walking and they've got a crutch or something like that right Keep your eyes out for that. Keep your eyes for, <laughs> this is politically incorrect. Keep your eyes out for the gimpy gate. This is the gate of your walk, the gate of someone's walk, the gimpy gate. It may be a chance where you can help it, or it may just be a reminder that you have to do one step and then the other step and then one step and then the other. You can't just hop, 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 or hobble, 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 hobble. If you get the opportunity to help, help. But this is what you should be doing. Just very gently, very gently moving forward. Very gently, very gently, very gently. Gently moving forward. It's it's a gentle swaying motion. What else is coming through for you? Yeah, wherever it is that you hear ocean, whether it's a shell to your ear, whether it's an ocean drum, whether it's ocean on TV, it doesn't matter. You need to hear the This is something that even if you can't get to ocean, even if you're in your car just doing this, you can do this and nobody's going to see you at the traffic light. Shh, shh. Call the energy of the ocean in. Call the energy that's the emotional flow back. And this is how you call it in. I know it looks like I'm pushing it out, but you can push it in just as easy. Just as easy. Very, very ocean energy. If you know Tai Chi or like Tai Chi, do a little bit of that. That's what I've got. That's complete. Wow, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you've got. You are, you are enough, you're ready enough, and you're ready to do it. Whatever this um, light bulb idea that wants to be birthed, you cannot rush it. You must allow it to unfold and to flow. So beautiful, beautiful energy on that. Beautiful, love those cards. Those were really fun to work with. And I didn't know how these, um, these I don't care cards would work, but that's what they're called. But I think I'm calling them the have a care cards because this is something... You pay attention to what you need to release. So, yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. Excellent. 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 Yeah, beach days are great. That's what that is. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, very ocean. So, that's what I've got. Oh, later, Chad, remind me to see if I can find the cards that Nell liked. Like, Nell was, I was in on the computer looking at different cards I wanted to order. And I was, I was done. I was done. This deck that I had seen several times, I'm like, now that's going to be ugly. I'm not going to like it. And Nell got pushy when I'm in the other room. I'm like, what? Okay. All right. I'll show you now because I just can't handle it. I've got to show you. I would not have. This is like the the Wanderwood or something. Goofy Wandwood. They are goofy ass cards. Goofy. And Nell loved them. And like I had to get them. And that's after that is when I saw the goofy... Um, drum the ocean drum so but these are i don't know what she loves about these but it was hilarious and yeah and i'm i'm like i told phil that and i'm i felt just kind of cheesy even telling phil nell wanted to get these cars nell liked these i so i got them but it's like oh my gosh we could ask her we could why not we could How's the list, um, Kim? If the list is clear, then we'll ask Nell what it is about these cards that she wants to share. But um, they are super, super whimsical. Super, super silly cards. Like, not serious kind of cards at all. So, if the list is clear, we'll look at that. If the list isn't clear, then it's clear. Okay, let's look at what Nell has in these funny, funny cards. And then we'll, we'll get going back to the paid list. Uh, uh, okay, all right. We're going to flip these down for a minute. All right. Flip that down and flip this down. She's giggling. She's sitting on the rock and she's giggling. It says, see question, purpose, privilege. She's liking these for their simple, simple language. Everybody feels like the wet hen sometimes. 
Everybody feels like the bad hair day sometimes. Everybody feels this. Let's see if I can do that. Whoa, hang on. Everybody feels this sometimes. Everybody has that motion where they feel that. C, question. This is take a look at yourself and what's the question, what's the point? This, she loves this. Oh my gosh. This is us in avoidance. This is this is her expression on her face. We all have done this where we're like, uh, a little bit of resistance. Look again, look again, she says. Look again, look again. Question, why does it piss you off? Why does it trigger you? You know the, you know the value. What is the purpose? What is the purpose? What is the meaning of this? She's getting very, what is the meaning of this? Very loud. She's keeping saying that. No, I'm not going to say it again. What is the intention? What is the purpose? Open your eyes. And she's doing this. She's showing me like winked at when I, what is the meaning of this? That's what she's doing. It's crazy. It's like looking again at the purpose. See again, see again, ask another question. It's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to see what's going on. It's a privilege to be able to have the eyes to see, to look again, to look again. Look again at the light. Look again at what you looked so closely at before. Look again. You missed something. You missed something. Look again. Look again. Now I'm looking at these cards. She's saying, who do you think is more? Who's, who do you think sees more? Is it this or is it? Is it this guy or this guy? It's this guy, right? Everybody can tell that. The other guy's just looking at himself. Looking at himself. Four cups, four cups, four cups. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, she's talking about if you're bored or if you have apathy in the four of cups. It's a, it can mean very, very much like going within, going within, and almost too much. It can be a little bit of navel-gazing or self-pity. This is what she's giving me, four of cups right here. This is, She loves this deck. She loves this deck. She, she says, this guy can see more. He's wide-eyed. This guy sees more. Okay, got it now. All right, what else is going on with these? Bond. This one she got very quiet. Bond. This is her referencing friendship with Gogs. It's her friendship with um, the creatures around her, but specifically Gogs, the fire of Gogs, the fire of Gogs, the bond that comes through with Gogs every time. There is a certain thing that is a friendship thing that is important. That is part of our purpose, to serve each other, to be here with each other, to create friendships that challenge us, friendships that make us grow, friendships that um, ask more of us than we would normally do sometimes. And I'm not saying serve from an empty cup, no. But you know the friend that will call you out on your shit? You know the friend that you need to show up for a little bit more or will ask you to show up a little bit more and not be flaky. These kinds of things are important. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. We're going to put this other one up for a minute. We've got Gogs returning to the fire. He's actually walking Nell's direction. We're going to the Red Fairy Tarot. I have no idea what's going on here, Gogs. What's up? What's up? What do you want us to see? Something about that tunnel. Understanding the need for rest and then being able to do the magic is what I'm getting. Understanding the need to get out, get out. Something about that tunnel, that tunnel from the other day. Something about that tunnel, knowing where it is, knowing what lies beneath, knowing where your magic is. All of this, he's he's saying. Knowing how to build a fire, knowing when you are the fire. Are the fire. Yes. Nell's just whistling and waiting by her rock and Gogs is working his way. He doesn't, he doesn't exactly walk the way of the tunnel that she showed. He's walking the path, knowing when to reach out to your friend. Gogs sometimes has to go the other way. It's not always Nell that's the playful one. Sometimes Gogs has to get out of his own way and go down to the shore and visit Nell. Anything else? He never feels like getting out. He'd rather be a grouch and a hermit all the time. He'd rather not get out. He knows when you know better, you have to do better, even if you're an old fuck like me. Yeah, yeah. 
When you know better, you have to do better, even when you're old like me. These limitations of the mind, this is something that are put, look, look, look at that. Oh my gosh. There's a lantern, there's a light, and it's right inside the tunnel, the tunnel that I was telling you about. Look closer, look closer. Nell told us to look closer. Look closer how Nell is showing this kind of energy. Gogs is feeling like he's going through this. This is telling us that when we are feeling discouraged, when we are feeling disturbed, disturbed is the word he wants to say, disturbed. He's talking about depression when everything feels disruptive and gray and when there's depression. There's something that he knows he's got to come out of that or try and pull himself out of that. He knows some of what we would call hacks to do. He knows what he needs to do. He also knows he need, if you're feeling something misaligned in the in the field, if you're feeling something misaligned in the field, and I'm not talking a nature field, I'm talking cosmic field. If you're feeling that, you need to get out of whatever it is that you usually do and go towards something different. Make the sacrifice to let go of the limiting mindset to get out there and do your magic again. This is what he wants us to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting a, a, a Star Wars. I think it's a Star Wars reference. Star Wars, Star Trek. Wasn't my biggest thing. But there's a, a disturbance in the force. This is what he's feeling. This is what's going on. You have to go out there and reach out to your friends. That's what I'm getting. That's complete. All right. Thanks, guys. That's what I've got for that. Holy smokes. Yeah. That's what's going on, guys. I have no idea why. But okay, <laughs> all right. It's Star Wars. Okay, thanks, Chad. Thanks. I knew it was one of them, but I get them. I get them confused sometimes. It's like I know the difference, really. I do, but it's a wonder I know my own name sometimes when I'm in here. And yeah, it's amazing how the cards will bring it together. Even if if I have trouble getting there, there's a reference from the other day, a reference to this, and the card with that tunnel comes through. It's like the cards are always so good. All right, I'm gonna do my commercial. Let me do that. Where did I put the little? There it is. This is what's going on today, guys. There's $20 blind oracle reading. That was what Krista got just a little bit ago. There's $30 for the year ahead. A one question tarot read that's a mini is seven to 10 cards for $30 or a full is 15 to 20 cards and that's $40. And I get nosy. You're not gonna get sugar coated. If something seems like, oh, screwy palooey, I'm gonna tell you, this person's a little sketch. This person's screwy palooey. I'm not gonna say, well, this one seems great. No, don't have time for that. If they need to write off, yeah, you'll hear it. So my specialty reads I do with the bones, the crystal ball, or past life reading. And you can do Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal. And it's a feisty butterfly. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. There you go. And the information is in the bio and the E comes before the I. So that's what I've got. So that's the information. I probably can do one more micro after I get some water. And then we'll get onto the paid list again and go from there. And uh, maybe get building furniture a little today. Who knows? We'll see what's going on. But yeah, that's what we got going on. So yeah, get on the list. And I swear, I think I saw my sister from New York in there in the, in the chat. And she's the one that got me the Snoopy deck. So... If she's in, um, I'm gonna, if you're still in here, throw a shout this way and we will do something for you. Or just uh, privately message Kim or Chad and let them know and we'll, we'll do a quick, quick throw of cards for my, for my sis. Just a quick, what do you need to know today type of thing. Nothing too serious. Nothing too serious at all. So let me know. Um, no, it's not Cher. It's my sister, Nick, Nicole. So if you see Nicole in here, I thought I saw the Nicole that was her. And if I'm wrong or if she's scrolled on by, it's really not her gig. She doesn't do the tarot thing so much, but she knows I do. So she's the one that got me the Snoopy cards and I love it. So, yeah. Yeah, I have I have a lot of sisters. <laughs> sisters from other misters, sisters, blood sisters, stepsisters, a lot of sisters. So, yeah. I think Cher's traveling. Cher's on the plane all the time these days. So, yeah. So, okay. All right. She probably zoomed on by. So, if she pops in again, you guys, let us know if you see Nicole. And if she wants me to read from the Snoopy deck, I will. I'll hold it to the side for her for later. Okay. Hey there, Steph. I think you and I are due for a freaking phone call at some point here soon. So, yeah. Michelle, you'll be a sister. Okay, Michelle. You're gonna be a sister. Let let's uh, 
Let's do a read for Michelle, my sister from the other Mista. All right. We're going to go into the Tarot of the Dark Night Sky, and we're going to throw five cards for Michelle. What do you need to know today? Michelle, my sister from another Mista. Okay. Yeah. Let's just throw them. Woo. Oh, the lover's card is coming in big, big, big. This is where we're making choices, and this is Tarot of the Dark Night Sky. The lover's card is huge. What is the decision about? I'm getting, okay, Mishi, you need to know that you need to do things a little bit different. There's a desire of your heart you're ignoring, and this is something that's important. The desire of your heart that will make you most happy, most blissed out, is something you should pursue, pursue, pursue. There's breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. This is where your heart is, and this is where you want to go. It's happiness emotionally, and it's reward financially. You need to go there, and you're thinking of every excuse in the book on how you can't, why you can't, all these limiting things, why you can't. You need to go beyond that if you want if you want to have the the legacy breakthrough the inheritance the wealth breakthrough and all the bliss under the sun you, you need to let go of some of these limiting beliefs and it feels like there's three in particular it doesn't feel like there's eight it feels like there's three limiting beliefs that are really in your way so examine a little bit of your shadow side what's going on with that yeah we'll break out the shadow cards yeah okay top top card here this Four of Cups. Now, we saw that just a minute ago. Remember when we had those funny, crazy cards out and Nell was talking to us? This is the card she was mentioning. This is the card where we're navel-glazing too long, too meditative, too into the um, self-pity too long. This one's coming up followed by the Ten of Wands, followed by the Hangman or Woman, Indecision. This is a shift of what you're thinking, and I want the shadow cards. This is... The shadow work oracle, we're going to pull one shadow lesson and you can figure out the other two. So just one second. This is a private read, Katie, and I'm doing it for Michelle just because we, we got the nudge to do it. Oh my God. Avoidance? Really? Really? And this is what it says. It's okay to see the need to avoid discomfort, but also to overcome it and thrive. And this is the shadow lesson card for you. This is what's going on. So that's what we've got for you, Michelle. That's what we've got. So yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous. So Tarot of the Dark Night Sky. And then these shadow work cards, the shadow work oracle cards, I really do like them. They're beautiful, beautiful. And I might have to read them with the silhouettes just because of the very nature of them. But they're really quite beautiful and gorgeous cards. So those I'm going to slam back together and slam back into the cart. And we'll see what's going on. Test for a blind. You got it, Tess. Let's see what's coming up for you. One second. Throw this here. Test for the blind. We're getting very earth energy. Earth energy. And I don't know if this is like earthly blessing, blah, blah, blah. And this is folk energy. Let's see what's coming through. Tess, Tess. I'm getting the energy of Straganona. Um, the story of Straganona and Stone Soup is coming through. What is that about? Why are we there? There's somebody, I think his name is Paolo something, did the children's book on Straganona. I don't know if he did it in like the 70s or 80s or what. But the story of Stone Soup is where nobody has enough soup so everybody contributes something. And I think the Straganona in that one, if I'm remembering, as I'm telling, it seems like she's the one that goes talking to everybody and everybody contributes. It seems like that's the case. So Tess, what I'm asking and what I'm being called to ask you to do is go start asking people to contribute. Go start coordinating. You need to, you need to bring together, coordinate other people. Not everybody has the gift to network. I mean, I can, I, I, I'm comfortable here. I'm in my zone, but I can be really painfully shy sometimes. Not everybody has the gift of the social butterfly. And even though you don't love that gift, it's one you can employ at your at your will, at your leisure is what I'm getting. Okay. All right. Shelf that. What do the cards have? Herbal allies. The plants that go together, the friends that go together, the allies that come together. Herbal allies. Like, um... Maybe we would have like in um, 
some teas you might have ginger and cloves coming together and maybe, um, I don't know, maybe some things you might have cardamom or maybe some things you might have chamomile. This is like things that come together in the herbal sense that would be good for you. This is something, all I can get is, I'm getting referencing to Celestial Season Sleepy Time Tea. And no, they aren't paying me to advertise. But there's different kinds of things that come together. There's things like mint and chamomile come together really beautifully. I don't know what this is about. This is what's coming through. The mineral realm. You're supposed to be doing this in your stones. In, in your stones as well. In like the stone soup. So if you have selenite and labradorite, you're supposed to be using these things and harmonizing these things for intention. For intention of dream work. Get yourself some sodalite. Get yourself some selenite. And honey calcite would be good too. Honey calcite or citrine. These kinds of stones. One of them very, very solar and one of them very, very almost lunar. These two things need to come together. Don't know what that's about. If you do it in stones more than in teas, you'll understand. Um, something about the way you would do it. There's something that's due to be harvested for you. Something to call forward out of your dreams. It's the harvest time of your dreams coming forward that wants to ask you to do something and call it forward. The harvest of the dreams. Now we're going into the, the folk oracle the folk people or something is what it is called what is the what is the spiritual lesson that you're about to harvest this will be in the dream space oh oh this is a dream space where you might have a recurring dream where somebody pisses you right off like pisses you off and you have to understand that you need to let go of this particular version of them in order to move forward in your life i don't know what this is about but yeah 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 mm, comes through a little bit of Growly face comes through, like, ah, uh, growly face comes through. Pissed off, then you wake up, you realize this is the dream. Am I holding some kind of grudge that I don't need to be holding? Let's see what's coming through here. Okay, this says temple, inner being, moderation, sacred space. This is where you need to be getting to before you go into the dream space. And this is very, very grounded energy, and you're too much focused on the emotional energy. You need to get grounded a little bit more in the 3D realm during the day and then let the subconscious take it during the night, okay? Let the subconscious and the intuition weave together, play together, bring together, remind you of the grudge and, the, uh, and remind you of how to untangle the knot that you might move forward. The knot isn't something you have to carry. If you like have something tied in a knot, tied in a tangle, tied in a knot, tied in a tangle, it can make you miserable. Do what suits you. Don't hold so fast to the outdated thinking of the knot that you can't let yourself be free anymore. This is a remembrance. Remembering love, loss, and healing. Now, sometimes there are people that have passed over and there, there can be mixed feelings and they do kind of gentle down after the person passes. It seems like sometimes they can come through with a little bit more of um that gentle influence. Maybe they can do a little better from the other side than they were able to do in life. This feels ancestral here. This feels like an ancestor wants to help you with a grudge or an imbalance that you have had. This feels like the ancestor wants to help you untangle the knot that's here in the 3D. And we've got the two cats here. I'm getting two cats fighting. It can sometimes come through in cases of rivalry, sibling rivalry. This is, this is what's coming. These cats have learned peace now. They've learned how to be complementary to each other. Queen of Wands energy coming through, and it could be somebody with very much the charismatic Leo personality coming through very strongly. Um, the one that might be even kind of considered your opposite could come through and be like, okay, let's see what's going on with this. That's what's coming through here. The loyalty towards um, the, the tribe, you know, your soul tribe, the loyalty towards self and soul tribe shifts a little bit. You're learning to hold your boundaries a little bit differently, and they're learning to respect this a little bit differently. It feels like there has maybe been some time passed, a little bit too long of a time that has passed before you're allowing this person mm, anywhere close. You, you can allow them a little bit close. It, it won't hurt. You're operating from different terms, and so are they. The version that they were of themselves when you were eh, mad at them or in the dream. The dream is meant as a teaching remedy, a teaching remedy. Um, the slowing down and sipping tea is meant as a metaphor where you slow down and you drink and you hydrate, you take care of whatever it is, the herbal remedy, the herbal ally, whatever this is, the slowing down to drink in what was and the version that was is not the version that is. Compassion comes up again. Nurture, 
caring, loving life, compassion comes in. This is what's being asked to come forward from the other side, and it's being asked to come forward a little more prolifically for you. So this is what I've got for you. This is beautiful. Hopefully, hopefully you can see it all. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Anything else? Yeah, there is one more in here. The Straganona energy is the ancestral energy of the grandmothers that sacrifice, that do so much, that get caught up in the daily grind, that they work so hard during the daily grind that they sometimes miss, miss the beauty of their own children or get grandchildren because of the harshness of the, the life that they led. The Straganona energy is saying, when we allow each to contribute, whatever it is they can contribute, whatever it is their gift to contribute, and we take what they bring forward as a contribution, as the gift, even if we wouldn't think that we like onion in the soup, even if we wouldn't think we like celery in the soup, take their gift for what it is. They're bringing what they can bring, what their capacity to bring is there. Their hidden gift is also being brought forward. The fact that they are being asked to contribute might be bigger than what either of you know in this time, but this is asking for a, an interaction to happen this is wisdom of the elementals. This is um, also, it's saying fairy uncover. And what I'm getting is fairy elemental undercover. I'm not getting uncover. I'm not getting you have to go rummaging through the grass. I'm getting that there is a fairy elemental, a magic elemental, a lightness that needs to come forward, a lightness in the work of something, a lightness in, I'm getting the earth fairies. I don't know. Call them brownies, dryads, pixie sprites. I don't care what the technical term is. Earth fairy energy is coming through. Earth fairy energy. The one that wears like the brown like the nut. Like the brown squirrel. Yes, yes. The one that, that knows. The, the one that has this really sense of groundedness. That's what I'm getting. I don't know what all that means to you. You'll know better than I. But something that needs to be forgiven and changed and allowed the dynamic to flow. It's like you have the dream space. Remember the grudge. And even if you're letting go of the grudge and say you still choose to remain no contact with somebody. Fine, let go of the grudge anyway so you can move forward. Make room for the version of them to be different than the version you last knew. That's complete. Wow. Yeah, that, that's big. I don't know what that's about, but that's what that was. Holy smokes. That was really big. Really big. All right, let me get some water, and then we'll see what's coming up next for the list or whatevers. You are so welcome, Tess. You are so welcome, and... If you don't know exactly who that is right now, don't put pressure on yourself to figure out, oh, who is it I need to be nicer to? You might just be like, fuck off, we're all in the mood, you know? And it might be that the dream has to come before you're allowing anything to flow through. So don't be hung up if you can't identify it. Get out of the thinking space because it needs to come through in a different way. Okay, guys. Well, I highly doubt my sister is going to be coming back through. I bet you she's on with her day now because she is in New York, so it's a little bit later. So I bet she's on with her day. Is this shirt from Trick or Treat? It's the Sami Zayn forever. Sami Zayn is a wrestler, and I like him as a wrestler. So, um, yeah, it's his shirt, and it's Friday, and Phil's not home, but... You know, Friday is generally wrestling. If he is home, we'll watch wrestling this weekend whenever he gets home, probably late tomorrow night or Sunday we'll catch up on wrestling, whatever. But yeah, so it's it's not from Trick or Treat necessarily. It's just Sami Zayn forever. So yeah, but that's a great question. It's a great question. Your stepbrother's the biggest wrestling fan? Oh my gosh, yeah. Then he'll know, ask him who Sami Zayn is. He'll know. He'll be like, what kind of tarot reading? And there's this tarot trick that likes wrestling. Yeah, yeah. And it's so much fun. It's funner than you think. I used to be a little bit of a snob about it, but we went to like a live wrestling thing and oh my gosh, everybody is just shouting and cheering or booing and having such a good time. And you can, uh, that Roman Reigns, meh. I think they're gonna bring him back as a baby face Scorpio. I really think they are. But um, I think that if I would have come into wrestling and liked wrestling when he was among the horsemen and in the shield and seen all that backstory beforehand and then gone with it, yeah. But he kind of was... Um, a narcissistic type of person, but he's a beautiful, he's a beautiful man to look at. I mean, he's just like, okay, good job, God. Well done, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and yeah, my husband Phil would know I say so. Can I ask for clarification on something I mentioned earlier regarding Gox? Absolutely. Absolutely. Ask away, Chad. What is it? 
I always tell him I don't get that channel, Matt. <laughs> if you go to um, a live thing, it might be a little bit more fun. Okay, so what is the question that you have, Chad? We'll ask Gogs. We'll see what he wants to bring forward. So Chad's probably typing and that's a-okay. I'll show you a couple of other decks I got. Now this one is one that um, is called the In Intuit Tarot and they have like a keyword deck and I thought it was beautiful. So I got two of these. I like the keyword tarots. Doesn't mean you have to use all of their keywords or any of their keywords, but it's a great way for beginning and if you wanna have something a little bit different and fun, it's good. Do guides suffer from depression or anxiety? <laughs> okay. Chad, Gox is laughing on this. He is saying, um, that's called life, son. That's called life. I think Gox didn't have the easiest go of it in the earth realm. That's called life. The ups, the downs. Yeah, yeah. I'll try and get out of the way. The guides, the lessons that you learn, you call them guides. We're just folks, people. We're just men. We're just women. We're just folks, people. People like you. We, we've been on the planet. We know how hard it is. We know there's duality. We know how hard it is. Sometimes we get lost in a memory, a fragment of time. We can go back to a fragment of time. We can shift back. You know, when I go back to my 50s, I prefer my 50s than my 70s. You know, I remember my time as a strapping lad in my 50s. You call depression anxiety. Others call blue. Grouse, grousing. Stop your grousing, man. That's what she would say to me. Stop your grousing, man. She would say, stop your grousing, man. Come in so to get some food. Eat, you'll feel better. Hang on. She's showing me. I, I'm seeing Mrs. Gox. <laughs> And she's calling him out and saying, stop your grousing, man. So clearly he was stewing about something. But yeah, he understands what depression is. But his wife would say, stop your grousing, man, and come on in. Sometimes it comes as if that they get a little impatient with humans not, not getting the clue. And they understand how hard it has been to be human because they've been there. They, they know the challenging life that is the 3D world of duality. I don't think they get in a funk, but I think they do sometimes get a little frustrated. Frustrated with how quickly we learn or sometimes like, okay, yeah, yeah. He's saying like your, like your young lad that would run into the wall, like your young lad that would run into the wall. He's talking to me about my son that in like third grade thought it was hilarious to just go full bore into the wall as hard as he could just run and then fall down and laugh and think it's so funny. And meanwhile, as a mom, I'm like, son, this is not good. I'm freaking out. And he would do it again and again. And he was trying to get laughs off of his friends, right? Like sometimes we run straight into a wall and can't almost help it. And it's like, um, sometimes we run into a wall because we need to learn the lesson and we're not getting it. So learning from the school of hard knocks would be how my mother would say it. My mother, she's here. My mother is saying, tell them the rest of that story, dear. Gogs is looking over an eyebrow cocked, looking at my mother like, okay, yeah, do share. The rest of the story is my son would do this so often, he would run into that wall, that one day I decided I would chase him down the hallway, which had a wall at the end. So he goes hauling ass towards the wall. I go hauling ass right after him. And I'm no small frail thing back then either. We both body slam into the wall, fall over. I think that ended running into the wall. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> yes, yes. My mother laughed at my parenting style and my parenting technique. It was very different than hers. And she's laughing pretty good now. Um, 
sometimes you gotta do it and you gotta go like all in this hard knocks lesson sometimes. And the guides recognize this too. Gox is laughing, he's finding that pretty funny. Yeah, hard knocks is sometimes the humans have to learn. So the guides will get a little bit frustrated when they see us having to learn hard knocks. They do remember their emotions. They do remember, and they are expanding. Just because somebody's crossed over and is acting as a guide doesn't mean they have all the answers to the cosmos. The cosmos is ever evolving, always growing, always expanding. But they have a lot more information than just when in the Earth sphere. So we think somebody crosses over, of course they have all the answers. They can access things a little bit differently. So I think that there sometimes gets a frustration or a little bit of sorrow for the speed that that it it occurs with for us to learn or the slowness. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's what I've got. <laughs> yeah. The list is clear. That's what I got. Anything else? No, no. He's good. He's going inside. Yeah. Grousing about something is what he calls it. So I think there's birds called grouse, but okay. All right. Whatever. Jack, you're going to get a mini? Okay, let me get some water, and we will get a mini for Jack. All right. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put Jack on the list for a mini. Okay, Jack, I want to go to the Harmony Tarot. I have two of them. And then there's um, another one that we might go into also, but for the mini. Do you have whatever your guides want you to know? Okay, I'm going to tip these down. And I want to shuffle this like two or three times. This deck is new. I got a backup deck for this one. So mini read for Jack. They're saying really something acknowledging um, beauty is coming in. There's something about the way you do when when you step off the gas is what I would say, but when you step back a bit, there's more beauty there than you actually have been giving yourself credit for. There's beauty in the way that you do something. So it's like sometimes your ambition puts you in hyperdrive and you get a little overly critical of yourself. And there's beauty in something when you slow it down. I don't know what that's about. And tinkling bells chimes wind chimes okay the air elemental is good for you like uh, I, i'm getting the image of somebody opening their windows and wind chimes coming in and the air elemental wanting to come in yeah yeah i think they the letting go of the self-critical would serve you the business and the body image i think that you're actually more stunning is the word that i'm getting than you even know like physically you 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 got a good genetic lottery. You didn't fall down the ugly tree and hit every branch at all. You didn't fall into the ugly end of the pool. No, you got some good in your gene pool, big time. And there's beauty that comes through, particularly when your eyes soften. So, you know, when you're scru scrutinizing, and I'm really scrutinized, scrutinizing how stern we can look in the 11th flare up. But when we soften, there's something that comes through there. There's something that happens when you soften. So don't let the 11s come in and scrutinize, scrutinize, right? Um, soften. You will see the beauty there. I'm getting chills on this. There is something very, very beautiful. It's like if you were to look yourself in the mirror and be able to say even three things that you find beautiful about yourself, um, this would be good for you to do, to really take a little time and acknowledge the beauty that is there. Okay. These cards feel ready for Jack. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this down here pretty good. Uh, I don't know which way to shift these. This way? Yeah, maybe this way. Okay. What we're seeing is the Ace of Swords is clarity, and what it's crossing by is death. So this is the clarity of the truth, having integrity of self and soul. It's not in integrity for our soul to be overly harsh on ourselves just because we're clear about a thing that needs to change. We're clear about a transformation. Just because the caterpillar is clear that something's going on and he's not really feeling like a caterpillar doesn't mean that he's completely transformed into butterfly. He's clear that change is afoot. This is what's going on. You are clear that transformation in some way is afoot. There is more expansion and more beauty to come in whatever it is that you're doing. 
you're very, very clear on this. You have here the Page of Cups in the Conscious Thoughts and the Page of Pentacles in the Subconscious. So you've been sitting in the money thoughts, the new student, the student of the money, the student of figuring out things in the 3D, okay? But here, the Page of Cups, the emotional creativity and a gift being offered. We've had the Four of Cups a lot in the show earlier today, but this is something where you're pivoting and looking a little bit more at something. Ah, hang on. It's doing this puzzling thing. Okay, sorry about that. That puzzle thing came up. So you're doing more of this creativity, this emotional thing that's creative, that's the more true, deep emotions that's coming up. This is what's coming in. You're, you're looking at some shadow work, but you don't need to be so critical. Now, this is conscious, conscious, subconscious here. Recent past, near future. Recent past, five of cups. Grieving over something and really letting it go. You've stared at it long enough. Whatever this is that didn't work out, didn't pan out, didn't play out, whatever it is, it's taken enough of your joy. It's okay for you to have this joy in your hand again. Have the emotional joy and the happiness again. Knock some of the dust off. It feels like um, the metaphor of being thrown from a horse is a little bit underestimating what felt like the damage that got done. You got thrown big. The hangman. There's a new perspective that comes in. If somebody is thrown from a horse... Yeah, that's going to hurt. Are they going to be ready to get up and ride again? No. Are they going to be more critical? Maybe. Are they going to be a little bit like um, more anxious about it? Maybe. Not everybody just gets right back on that horse. But there is something that is asking you to open up to joy from a different point of view, from a different perspective in here. I want a little bit of clarification on that. Let's take a look at this. It's not just about um, romantic relationships, but it feels primarily that way. It feels primarily about how you view what... What, I don't want to use the word need, but I can't think of a, what gap, what space that romantic relationship fills in your world, like fills, F-I-L-L-S, fills. What gap that fills needs to be looked at, but it's changed for you. Something has changed. Something in you has changed. Something has changed within you. Something is not the same. Yeah, sorry, Claire. Audience is coming in. Everybody deserves a chance to fly from Wicked. I think it's in Defying Gravity song. I'm not sure. Something has changed within you. Something is not the same. Everyone deserves a chance to fly. About your ex? Yeah, yeah. You're literally starting to see what it is, the purpose of relationship in your world and how they serve and how they operate a little bit differently. The emperor comes in. The emperor sometimes gets a bum rap from me and today he does not. The emperor knows his power, knows his strength, knows part of his job is to protect and provide for the realm and establish order. His job is to create the kingdom. The Empress creates it here in the receptivity and in the gentle nudges. The Emperor creates it in the 3D. And there's a little bit of taking the strong lead as the Emperor, setting up your atmosphere, your surroundings, your kingdom on your terms in a different way. Rather than yielding that over to someone else to make those um, choices. That's what I'm getting from him. Very interesting. We've got the Wheel of Fortune coming up. Wheel of Fortune wants you to have a sense of allowing the timing to be right. Often the Wheel of Fortune comes in for me like um, like a safe, like the third combination in the safe. And today it's coming in like an hourglass. In fact, I'm probably going to have to order an hourglass. I think I know how to read an hourglass like a crystal ball. And I didn't know that until a few days ago. And I think I do. So give me just a second. We're going in there. Something about as the time is going and I'm watching the eye, I'm watching the hourglass in my mind. I'm watching it go. I'm watching it go. It feels like if you were to see it increment hour, 60, 60, 12 minutes. What I'm getting is 12 minutes. 12 is a significant number for you to look at. There's also something referencing December going on. When you have 12, 12 months is December. That's also the time of Janus turning the head, turning the head, the end of End of December into January, there's something, it's 12 p.m. on the clock right now. Right now. 
we're getting the 12 minute increment. There's five chunks in the hour for you, 12 minutes. Think of this in percentages if it helps your brain to calculate it. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure what all that's about. Um, yeah, this is something that is very much about sacred time and the time that it takes for you to shift, shift your thinking at the time that it takes for you to dedicate towards yourself. Very big and important that way. You see 1212 a lot. Yeah, I keep looking for that. And 1212 for me often is a signature of two steps forward, one step back. Um, if you see 1221, it is like mirroring a lesson to you. So look for that. It will probably be occurring more for you coming up. Don't know what that's about. Let's go back into the cards for a minute. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm writing down hourglass to the side because um, it's time. It's time for me to start doing that. Okay. All right. The lovers. Okay, the desire to have this, the desire to have this inhibits your freedom because you will yield your emperor's position to someone else. You know how to be a high maintenance babe, high maintenance bitch in the relationship, high maintenance girl. You know how to be that. You also know when the controlling is a little bit too much. And if somebody's telling you everything you want to hear, although it's charming as hell, you also know better. So you're kind of on high alert all the time. There needs to be a, a more understanding of what you're genuinely feeling within and what is... Um, being the the impetus for that what creates that it's easy to feel all gooey gooey at the beginning of a relationship everybody's putting on their best foot um the way you're doing relationships needs to be a little bit um come from a deeper portion of you and yourself and a more candid space in you and yourself so if you really don't like something don't pretend that you do if you really don't like a certain food if you really don't like a certain team if you really have a certain level of baggage that you're coming forward with if this is your baggage and you come forward with it say you have a health condition or say you have something that you know this is going to be a hard one like if you're dating as a when i was dating and i dated phil he knew yeah i have two kids one of them is almost grown but one of them's still a kid this is part of the baggage i've been divorced and this is what went down this is like really a um an honest reckoning with self it doesn't mean you have to spill all your guts on the very first date i'm not saying that but what i'm saying is be honest with yourself about what some of this baggage is, what some of your shadow lessons are. Be very, very clear. It doesn't have to be criticized. It's just how you operate. It's just how you do. It needs more honoring than criticism from you. This is part of the, the beauty that comes through. What you're working on with your husband. It could be something that you're working on. It says you hold back sometimes because you fear judgment and abandonment at the core of it all. Jack, honey. Even if you felt like the whole world abandoned you, your spirit guides would have your back. You are never abandoned. You are never abandoned. We get taught this. Sometimes it's a survival need when we, we have to learn how to accommodate our parents just for our own security, those kinds of things. It's very human. So um, understand that fearing judgment isn't something that it, you can entirely escape, but you can grapple with in a more beautiful way. And part of it is judging yourself less harshly. Okay, enough sermon on that. Let's go in the environment around you. Ooh, you are getting the shadow lessons from the past. Oh my God. I don't love seeing this, but you're going to see it. And this is a powerful one. Look at this devil. She is powerful. She is powerful. And I think devil is, I think it's a Capricorn sign. Why can't I ever coordinate this right in the middle of the read? I think it is a Capricorn sign. I think it is also a December sign. If you guys know, let me know if this is, um, I, 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 that's what I'm getting. That's what I'm getting. It is Capricorn. Yeah. There's something, this is coming up as a time stamp, not just um, the toxicness of the devil that's usually here. It's like by the time you hit December, you will have turned your face to move into next year. And these baggage lessons that feel heavy are going to go quite a bit easier. Capricorn is, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. 1219 to 120. <laughs> Yeah, this is verifying the time stamp. Just let it flow through. You're going to be doing okay. Here you have the Four of Cups. Now, we've talked about this a little bit earlier. I mentioned it earlier as well. This is when you turn and you pivot towards that cup of joy that you wanted, and it's time to do so. So the going within is great. You can analyze something. Okay, all right. So I was talking with my sister on the phone the other day. This is my sister in Arizona. And she, one year, was super, super athletic and running marathons. And we were talking about different subjects in life and self-improvement and blah, blah, blah. 
And I said, it's kind of like reading a book on that. Or if I'm reading a book on a marathon, it's not quite the same as actually running the marathon. So there's something about getting in and doing this coming through to my mind and coming through as the reference. You have to do the joy. You have to do the joyful thing. You can't just keep reading and learning and forever overanalyzing. Although the therapy might be super great and super helpful. There's something about creating the joy and experiencing the experiences that you have to do. This is bringing more joy forward out of you because you're less harsh on yourself, bringing more joy to the relationships because God damn it, you're good in a relationship. You do like to contribute. And if you can let off the, the critical and the control, you can allow so much more joy in. It's very exciting. So this is what I'm getting for you. Yeah, remember that metaphor of the marathon. It's hilarious, really hilarious. It's like, I could read a book about running a marathon all day long, but let's just look at these cheeks. We know Angie isn't running a marathon anytime soon. <laughs> so if I want to experience that, I'm going to have to apply myself to do that, right? I don't, but that's the metaphor that came through. All right. Ooh, the Empress comes through. Looky, looky. There's a gentling now. You set things up on your own terms. You get the conditions of the Emperor really, really strongly. When we clarified the hangman, the Emperor need clarified first. So make it on your own terms. And then be receptive. I think you have it upside down of that. I think your divine feminine is a little, little overactive to the point of detriment in relationships sometimes at the beginning. And then it flips as the relationship continues. Be, be aware of that. Do some, um, do some of your own homework on that. But I would not be surprised at all if that's sometimes what happens. Okay. So here we have the six of coins. Now you need to look. This is a beautiful one. And then we have the six of wands. Somebody's giving you something and it looks like it's a small something in comparison to the whole wide world and everything else going on. It looks like it's a small something. But look at how big her hand is ready to receive. We might blow some things out of proportion and what other people have, we might compare, play the comparison game and blow it out of proportion. But the gift that is in the hand is quite big for the what's going on. The gifts all around you are quite big also. You're timid before a client signs up to work with you, but once they work with you, you get to business. Yeah, yeah. I I think that this might be something, how you do relationships in general, might be a little bit, um, it may not be completely across the board. But when you're first getting to know someone, and it's common in human nature, to kind of just kind of go in tender, tender. And um, you might go in a little bit too empress heavy into relationships at the beginning and then go emperor bold at the end. And I'm saying, if you know what you need out of the relationship, know yourself, you can go in more balanced. Six of Wands comes up victorious about this. This is something, this feels like six months. I'm getting another time, time stamp feeling off of this. Six of Wands is victory. Now, we don't have six months. Well, maybe we do have six months until December. I was gonna say we don't, but that was May. We're, we're mid-June now. Why am I getting this timestamp on this damn card? Why am I getting so much of this December energy? The horse is blind in this card. Hang on for a second. The horse needs to travel blind on its own. The rider needs to travel blind on her own for a while. You can see the rider's um, robe or ribboning kind of crossing the horse's eyes. So the direction needs to be blind for right now. It doesn't mean close your eyes when you're driving. What it does mean is allow things to not be all in control. Allow yourself to experience the forward momentum and just feel that. This is what I got as the clarifier. The way you bring your soul to the party, the two of cups, they bring an equal offering. This is what I was talking about, balancing empress and emperor. Both of these need to be well balanced when you bring it next time. I don't think this will open up again. This gate of couples relationship is going to open more balanced before then. I think what you, I don't think that this is happening before then, even if you're dating or playing the field, but the balance within you needs to be there first. And then this opens. That's what I'm getting. Yeah. Yeah. So if you feel like your guides are keeping you in the dark, look for things. One of the things that you can do is if you're looking for a sign, something might be out of place and look for it if it comes in threes. If you're looking for signs everywhere, everywhere, it might be like, how do you know the difference? Look for things that might not be in a, a grouping of three, but it might come in three different times. You might see 
a bird or a dog or something weird three different times. Three is like the number to pay attention for creation. So start start listening, looking, and observing things in threes. Jot it down. If you see it once and it's kind of weird and out of place, say you saw a dog at your neighbor's house and your neighbor isn't a pet person at all. Then say you're going through, I don't know, maybe you're going to a restaurant and somebody's bringing in their blind C and I dog. That would be a little bit weird. Then say you go to, I don't know, maybe you're in Joanne's or Michael's Crafts or something. Not generally the pet smart store, right? But there happens to be some kind of dog thing that really stands out to you or a real dog. That would be the third. That'd be like, okay, what is dog signifying to you? It might be about loyalty. It might be about loyal friendship. It might be things like that. You saw a bunny three days in a row. You've never seen a bunny on your lawn ever. Okay. Bunnies are signs of spring, of growth, of prolificness, of doing, doing, doing. This is something, this is a time of growth. First time you've seen one since moving to North Carolina. is I think that's North Carolina that that says. Yeah. It's the NC. I'm not sure if that NC is North Carolina for you. The bunnies I would look for for as a sign. That might be an example. You might not see three bunnies again. But look for the, the, the third. It feels like the third is trying to give you the cue. So don't freak out. It, it, you, you can't just spend your whole life scanning for bunnies. But what you can do is when a bunny thing... I, I'm not usually seeing bunnies. I'm not usually seeing turtles. I'm not usually seeing whatever. And it may not be always the same. Like if you see something like... Um, whether it's a ball, a heart-shaped rock, whether it's a frog, whether it's a turtle, whatever it is, that's kind of a little out of the norm. That's what it will be. And the three is the time where creativity comes and also growth comes. So this is what's happening. It's also a shaking and shedding of the three swords. In the, in the tarot, you have the three of swords and it's heartache, betrayal, loss, sorrow, big, big stuff going on, big pains in the heart. It's also a releasing of those swords by honoring something that's the truth or honoring something that's caused pain that you're getting past. That's what I've got for you. That's complete. Sorry, that was a little bit um, lengthy, but it was important. So yeah, that's what I've got. Let me get some water and we'll see what's going on next. But yeah, look for that. Look for that. And be encouraged. The beauty that you see around you isn't necessarily only external of you. The beauty is definitely within you. All right. Gloria, next for the blind. Okay, got it, Kim. Thank you. Back to this one, Gloria. Give me a second. So we've got the, I think it's the Divine Circus. It might be called Sacred Clowns. Could be Divine Circus cards. And we also have the newly acquired I Don't Care or Have a Care Oracle. So this is um, very, very interesting coming up for Gloria. And what I'm getting is you have heard all your life, Gloria, Gloria, calling Gloria, being glowing, having light, having light, and you're feeling dim is what I'm getting. You're not feeling um, the, the Gloria energy. You're not feeling the glow as much as you should is what I'm getting. So we're going into these cards, what you can release and not care about or not overly care about, what you can have a care about. And then we're going to go into the, Sacred Circus card. So let's see what's going on with these. I'm going to flip this down so you can see what's going on. All right. One more shuffle on these. And these are modern art, but so far they're they're doing a really good job. And uh, the, the title of them was a little off-putting for me, but the art of them had me intrigued, so that's why I got them. Okay, so the message here is saying it's okay to doubt. Don't take it personally. Slowly but surely, stop doing so much. And then Game Over came up with a loud, wah, wah. somebody is going to be the loser on something and you need to let them go. They are definitely the loser. If you doubt their intention, believe their action. If you doubt what they're doing and their, their level of interest or the level of how much they've got your back, 
Who gives a rip? Let them go. I'm getting, it's okay to doubt. It's okay to let them go. It's okay to qualify. It's okay to be picky and choosy. It's like when you relegate someone, like you're you're thinking about them romantically and then you decide you're going to relegate them to the friend zone because they, they don't cut it. This is what you have to do. So slowly but surely you're learning discernment and this is stop doing so much. Don't take it personal if it's not a perfect fit. It's not a perfect fit. It says, gotta drink, cheers. It's time to celebrate yourself. So don't put up with just being tolerated. If you're feeling dim and if you're not feeling that you've got enough light going on internally, start fueling that up for yourself, not for the external. Okay, I'll pull these back so they can be seen here. And I am recording the whole show today. Let's see what the sacred clowns have or the divine circus has, whatever this is called. So much sadness. If you look, you see she's got all the treasures in her cap, all the silver and gold, all the treasure right there in her cap. But there's a tear that's in her eye. There's a tear that has to roll. There's a little bit of grief into each life. A little rain must fall. Yes. There is something about learning from the bittersweet and moving forward anyway acknowledging what's been there but um learning from the bittersweet and don't don't deny your own crown just because you have that there's reason to be proud bright baby this needs to come in again this love of self this honoring what lights you up and putting your face towards the sun again getting your glow back what else is coming through Secret of Shaboni. This one's coming through with a lot of energy of the goddess Kali. We're going to look in this. And Lelorna comes through as well. What are they saying? They're, they're giving me... Okay. We're stopping for a minute. We're right here. I want to see you. So this is giving me let it down, burn it down, destroy what needs destroyed, cut away what needs cut away. Good grief cut it away. Kali knows when to destroy. If it's chopping up a wedding dress, if it's breaking plates, if it's burning something down, raising it to the ground, then that's what needs to be done. Lorna comes in with the, with the grieving over something and the something that's in transformation. Kali comes through like a bulldozer ready to knock it over. If something is, um, is some, if something is a plant that is hostile to the environment, it'll take over the environment and, you know, dry, dry up everything, take up all the nutrients of everything else. It's like somebody that comes into the room and takes up all the oxygen or takes all your light, creates more shadow for you. You can't hardly get any light. This is what's coming up. And Lalorna Energy saying, let go of that. Let go of that. You don't play second fiddle to something. You don't have to play second. Let go of that. Be, be dead in a way with this second fiddle. Be dead in a way with this second, second. Be dead in a way with the settling. Be done, be done, be done with that. All right. What else is coming forward? The steampunk priestess and the supernova. My goodness. Yeah, you have felt a little bit dim. You need to let it go. I would do some kind of, if, if Kali is your goddess, I would do something that is like a, little bit of a destructive ritual that is a cleansing type of thing. A little bit something maybe not as simple as a burn letter. But yeah, it might involve a fire pit. It might involve a fire pit and burning something and letting it be um, transmuted and released. This is huge for you and it will help you get your shine back. Some of that fire light that's reflected, some of that heat that is necessary to really have catharsis is important for you. Steampunk princess or priestess, excuse me, is looking at things and opening the third eye. Look at, she's got the spectacles, but she's opening the third eye. This is the lens you need to look through. And she is super serious. She is really serious. She's not going to be um, subtle. And then you have supernova. This is returning to you. The solstice energy is here. It's trying to bring in brightness of summer, warmth of summer, um, this time to change, to be in joy, to be proud of who you are and don't let people create dimness around you. 
Don't let judgment of self create dimness around you. Let go of something with this energy. And then what? one more wants to come through. I'm not sure why. This isn't a deck I pull often, but today it is. Something about the bright baby, and it's in conjunction with this. So let me see what's coming up with this. Alice. This is referencing Alice, Alice in Wonderland and the adventure. And how strange and how very strange it is. And she learns to discern. It's a little bit of a different thing than um, when Dorothy's in Oz. If you're Alice in Wonderland, yes, you're having an adventure, but Dorothy gets told by her friends and companions. Alice gets the lesson of drink this, be big, drink this, be small. She gets the lesson right away because she internalizes it. She has to learn discernment really quick. She has to learn how to navigate the, the Queen of Hearts, the Red Queen. She has to learn how to navigate emotionally really, really quick. She has to learn friends and foes very, very quick. She has to learn who's going to put her in the light that makes her feel bright, like the bright baby or not. And she also has to learn where she can place trust a little better. Trust self first. That's one of the first lessons that she gets in the in the story where she's drinking something bit drinking something to be big and eating something to be small or vice versa you're not completely a child in this you have learned some things it is time to let yourself see it again through more clear eyes allow trust to be there but allow scrutiny as well if a kid is playing on the playground and they have a mean kid that comes up and is being a bully a little kid might be just as likely to push back as they are to say, oh, hey, this guy's bullying me. Little kids will sort things out. It's called, some people call it the law of the jungle. It's also called the law of the playground. So some things that we learn when we're in primary years, in primary school, in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, this kind of thing, Bright Baby wants you to know. And it feels like second grade, I'm getting the cutoff at second grade, kindergarten to second grade. How you made friends. If you look back on your life, how you made friends, it didn't take a lot to figure out you knew who to trust, who would be your good buddy, and who wouldn't. You knew this. And kids are brutally honest sometimes, brutally like, yeah, I don't like that one. He picks his nose. Or, yeah, I don't like that one because this guy hasn't figured out like it's kindergarten. This kid doesn't know, you know, how to find the bathroom soon enough, and he always smells a little funny. It's kind of a little bit judgy, but it's kid judgy, and it's kid quick, and that's what's coming through. This sense of discernment. If something smells a little off, it smells a little off. If something seems like that's a little gross, you don't like that. This is what's going on. I'm not saying judge the whole world and be judgy, but I am saying discern as a kid would. If they don't like peas, they don't like peas. If they like cake and they also like carrots, they might not like carrot cake. They'll discern which is which. You won't be able to fool some kids. Oh, you like carrots? Great. I'm going to make you carrot cake. And they're like, Meh. now, that's a vegetable. This is what's coming through. The things that you take in, be discerning about them. Be proud in how you present and do your honoring of the goddess Kali in this solstice time. It's important for you. That's complete. So yeah, that's gorgeous. And you will feel that shine come back. You will. The dimness doesn't have to last too long, but it feels like it's been a little bit a late standing lethargy is what it feels like it's been. So, or a little bit of over long lethargy. Yeah, that's what I got. That was gorgeous. Hugs to you, honey. I love hugs. I'm definitely a hugger. And hugs back to you. That's that's what's going on today. Let me get some water. We'll see if there's anyone on the list or if I'm going to be going and trying to build a day bed soon. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow I'll take that on. We'll see how it goes. Hey, Jamie from West Virginia. Good to see you. Okay. All right. Thank you for the gift you sent. Thank you, Jamie. Okay. Yeah, I, I wonder what my sister Nicole is up to today. She doesn't usually pop in the room, so we'll have to see, but um, she did pop in, so that's interesting. Okay. And Steph, I need to call you and talk with you, and I would love it if you came out this direction. I, I know you're familiar, and I know it's quite the drive. Or I could come that way, pick you up, and maybe we can figure something out. But um, call me later. We can figure that out. Okay. So let me show you where you can pay, honey. I'm seeing that, Vita. This is um, 
Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal. And make sure you get the E before the I when you spell feisty butterfly. It's F-E-I-S-T-Y. And even I get the typo wrong all the time myself. So it's Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal. Hopefully you can see that. And it's $20 for a blind read, and I'd be happy to do that. I'm happy to read and build furniture tomorrow. So whatever I'm going to do, no big deal, no big problem. So yeah, the link's in the bio if it helps. You're hosting a paint night tomorrow at the Frog. Ooh, yay. Oh, I'm so excited for you. That's cool. Super cool. Okay, I'm writing that down, Steph, that you're hosting paint night. Do they do paint nights around here? Stephanie actually knows this area that I just moved into a little bit better than I do. Um, Stephanie Intuitive Sear. Go follow her if you're not following her. But she does aura paintings that are beautiful. In fact, I'm going to get mine down. And you can reach out to Stephanie and um, she can give you more information on this. But I'm going to get this down. One second. Oh. So before Stephanie even really knew me very well, she did an aura painting for me, and this is what she came up with. And lavender is Lucy's color, and she was able to tune into that. The tree is where I always go in my meditations. Very, very um, strong heart into the tree, strong entrance into the tree is where I go. And this is one of the things that Stephanie is gifted to do. She's gifted in many huge, huge ways. But I love seeing this. Love, love, love seeing this. And she can do aura painting, and she's doing paint night. So if you're close to the Mystic Frog in Orem, Go see her, go see her. Okay. Yeah, go see her. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. Anything else? I think that's it. Yeah, I'll show it to you a little bit more. It is gorgeous, isn't it? Absolutely a stunner. I love, love, love it. Your profile pic is the one she did for you. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And she also does a Radu's Wheel reading that is incredible. So, yeah, teaching that tonight, spiritual interpretation. Got it, got it, got it. All right. Okay, so let's see if... Kim, did Vita say how she paid? Like, I can look and see, but I don't... I know that PayPal is sometimes a little bit slower to kick in. I can kind of check and see what's going on, if my stupid thing will do that. Cash up? Okay, hang on. See what we got. I'm going. I'm going. Yeah, it doesn't show it through yet, but if you've paid it, I will trust that it will come through. And it could be just my thing is a little bit slow. But Cash App is just fine. Cash App works pretty good. Yeah, the last one I'm seeing there is glorious. So that's just fine. So it's not letting you pay with Cash App. Huh. Yeah, I don't know why that is. I'll hold up the sign for you. Double check the spelling on it. And this is how we do it. But it's A Feisty Butterfly. So you put the dollar sign for Cash App. And then A-F-E-I-S-T-Y Butterfly. B-U-T-T-E-R-F-L-Y. So that's what that is. So um, if you want to go ahead and get your reading. And if you want to, then I'll just trust that you'll pay it later, Vita. I will trust that with you today. So if you want to do that, then that's great. You want to keep trying? Okay, then we'll do a collective real quick, and then we'll come back. We'll do it We'll do it that way. Okay. So let's do the collective. Let me see what else we've got in here. Oh, so I got a second of the Pulp Tarot. Now, this one's a little bit of a rowdier, ornier tarot. It's very, very noir. So we'll do this and then we'll do Vita's and I'll check Cash App in a minute for you. But we'll do the collective real quick. Swords are descending, descending, descending. And if we have the good sense to know it, we know it. It's not like it's raining swords upon us. We're getting here, the eight of swords. We got the nine of cups up top. Then we get the eight of swords and the seven of swords coming up this way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift this so you can see. Hopefully you can see what's going on. So we have this come in like this. 
So it feels like the swords are descending, like decreasing. So the over analysis, the over logic, 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 decreasing. The nine of cups coming in full wishes. The empress right here. This is receptivity, abundance, growth, having the wish about creating something to move forward. The eight, the limiting thoughts, boom, fading. The seven of swords, senses of betrayals or senses of needing to be stealthy in our maneuvering or cover our ass. It's not that we don't need to. It's just that we don't need to be overprotective on this. Here we have the five of swords. We're getting off that battlefield for sure. We're knowing when that we can cut losses, when we need to engage or not engage. It's... um. It's knowing when to walk out before the rain gets things too muddy. It's knowing when to move forward by moving on. This is what's coming up. And then the Page of Swords. Brilliant at something. Witnesses observe some things. Understands the lesson of hard communication. Doesn't need to add the insult to injury on this one at all. Doesn't need to win at any cost anymore. Just knows they present their sword of truth. Knows what they've seen. They've witnessed and observed. And they're carrying that forward in a huge way. This puts this in alignment for them. This is what's coming through. The truth that you know. The truth is the truth is the truth. What you know is what you know. And the truth that you carry with you and keeps you in integrity is the lesson for you. And not everybody's getting that same lesson at the same time. Understand that you are learning to let go your limiting thoughts. Understand that you are learning to cover your own ass and to judge more carefully. To be more stealthy about a thing doesn't mean never trusting anyone. It means you are learning discernment. You are learning the lessons that are most important to you. That's what I've got. The Empress is ready and receptive. And the wish coming true is when you are discerning that much, you are able to receive more and able to actually be more prolific, able to grow, able to expand, able to bring forth new projects. That's what I've got. Um, the receptivity that comes because you have let some of this go. The receptivity that comes because you are protecting what's vital to you what's important to you and it isn't the battle anymore so that's what i've got that's complete you'll take it you'll know what it resonates for and with for the collective on that one this is the pulled tarot gorgeous 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 reading okay <coughs> let me see what's going on tess just one second tess i see a dollar <laughs> so kim you're telling kim that you just sent a dollar so yeah it just went through the dollar went through so yeah that that it is working. I don't know what's going on with that, but that's okay. <coughs> yeah, Kelly, I can do a year ahead reading. I can totally do a year ahead reading. Yeah, if others are having issues, I'm putting Vita on the list because she said she was having a, a challenge. So we're going to do a blind for Vita and then Kelly will do yours afterwards. And Vita, you will get it to me. I know you will. And so I'm just trusting that and not to worry. And if it's if it's having an issue, it's having an issue. So, okay, we're going to go. Thanks for testing, Tess. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why sometimes it has issues, sometimes not. But it does seem like it's working now. Maybe it's a, a Wi-Fi connection. But no big deal. You go straight to Cash Up and maybe that's why. I, I, I don't really know. Okay. So Vita, if you are ready, let's let's um let's do your blind and then well do we do we want to do Kelly's ahead or what, Kim? You're read you're ready, Vita. Okay, let's do your blind and you can get me the 20 of cash up is still stubborn, send it on Venmo. I know you're gonna be good for it. We're gonna go into Vita's blind and then we'll do Kelly's and um if Kelly is on here, I thought Kelly said she was going to try doing Venmo. And if you let Kim know how you paid, that way if one of the apps is being weird, then okay. All right. Wow. We're getting witchy woo goodness coming for you. Okay, Vita. We've got the practical magic cards. We've got the woman in total control of herself cards. And we've got the Shadow Work Oracle. And the Shadow Work Oracle was the one I wanted to do first. So let's get it going and see what's going on with this. Okay. For Vita. There's three lessons coming through. Three lessons coming through big. And the woman in total control of herself deck. There's that song. 
I don't know who sings it, but it's very catchy. But it's really a, something is hugely appealing when you are in total control of yourself, when you're in this space where you know your power, you know your strengths, your assets. That's when you are strutting the best. That is when you bring the best to the party because you're not going to be bamboozled. You're not going to be waiting for validation that's external. You are confidently going forward. The woman in total control of herself is very, very queen of wands energy, queen of swords energy, very, very queen energy altogether. It's just big. So what we've got for the shadow lessons is the need to ride the storm. It says purge, purify, refine. Let chaos and turbulence cleanse your spirit. This is telling me the unacknowledged snotty cry that needs to come through. Part of this has to do with arrogance. This is coming through. Humility, awareness, and growth. If you've misread, misjudged a situation, it's time to let go of who's right, who's wrong. Let that go. We saw that. Um, let's see if I can show it to you. The Five of Swords is returning here. Now you can see this in different formats, but this is what's coming. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you're right. It's time to get off the battlefield, and that's what's coming forward. So riding the storm, purge, whatever, have the cry. If somebody's never going to get the capacity to understand you, to understand what's going on, if they aren't going to get it, they aren't going to get it, and that's okay. Not everybody has to get us. We're not, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. You're not everybody's cup of tea. That's okay. And it doesn't mean that you have to have somebody else's tea if they're not for you either. There's something about a lesson in arrogance here. Humility needs to be there. In this confidence, you go forward very beautifully. The Queen of Cups isn't seen as powerful sometimes as the Queen of Wands because she's compassionate. That doesn't mean she's any less a queen. She walks in. She is stately. She's beautiful. She's coming in there equally strong. Equally strong, equally gorgeous. It is as if you have two very beautiful... Okay, I'm getting... Um, You have the beautiful, beautiful peacock energy coming through. This beautiful, beautiful peacock. Then you have the brilliance of a peacock that is white. The all-white peacock. They are both stunning, dazzling creatures. One is not meant to be the other. So they both have this, and they they shouldn't be in the comparison game either. This arrogance, awareness, and growth. Yeah, this is what's coming through. Avoidance is coming through as a shadow lesson for you. It says it's key to see the need to avoid discomfort, but also overcome and thrive. Confrontation and progress. This is a confrontation of the soul self. She's up this tree on her own. She's not confronting anyone in battle. This is a confrontation of the soul self. Now let's see what... Understanding that you, in this analogy that I get, are the white peacock. The white peacock. It, it was one that maybe feels like, well, why didn't I get all the color? Why didn't I get all the beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous color? It doesn't know its own rareness or its own beauty. And if you've ever seen a white peacock fan its tails, it is stunning. It is ethereal and it is beautiful. And it's like you don't even know this about yourself. Okay, what else do we got? Beginning something anew. There's a decision time coming up. This is a decision time within like three weeks coming up. The beginning anew. The decision within three weeks. It's time to make the decision and the balance. Again, this energy of white coming through. This is telling me that light and illumination are coming forward towards you. If you can get beyond this. So I'm going to show you these. And then shut it down. Show you these. Shut it down. Show you these. Shut it down. Bring these in. Okay, now the woman in total control of herself. Let's see what the lessons are coming through with this. This is the meat on the bone for you. The judge, the exile, the thief of peace. What I'm getting is you've been in this space where judging yourself to be um, lesser because there's less vibrancy, perhaps there's less um, Queen of Wands energy about you. And for some reason you have misjudged or considered yourself a little lesser, less than. It, it needs to be released. It steals your peace. It steals whatever it is that you feel the enoughness lesson is coming through. Again, the white peacock is fanning and the exile. You are not meant to be the same, the same, the same. And when you walk your own path, whether you choose to be exiled yourself 
or whether it feels like somebody has pushed so this not enoughness comes pushed you like outside the norm pushed you outside the tradition you still cannot change the very nature of yourself is beautiful the very nature of yourself is quite stunning and when you recognize this this is when you regain the control this is when your judgment comes back online you're able to discern more fully the scholar came through with the empress of pleasure all right knowing what pleases you knowing what you bring forward is huge but knowing what pleases you knowing what doesn't please you the judge is in the house if it doesn't please you, you need to let it go. If they aren't around and in your corner, you need to let them go. Those around you are not always in your corner. So those around you that are just around you, but they don't really lift or add or bring joy to your life, need to go. Scholar already knows, and she's willing to look things for herself. The scholar goes into the books, dives into the book, excites herself from what's going on around her in the relationship realm, goes into the book. This is coming through as very much the literal going into the book. Why are we going in? You know this woman's story. Hang on for a second. Dame Maggie Smith is a really good example of white peacock energy. If you look up her, she was in Harry Potter. She was in Downton Abbey. Dame Maggie Smith is coming through. I'm looking at this card. She doesn't look exactly like Dame Maggie Smith, but that's who came through when I looked at her. This is who the reference is. I don't know why that is, but she wouldn't have considered herself as a very famous actress or even as a very famous lady. You've got um, the, the metaphor of the people that would come through on the stage of fame that you would know. You would know Dame Maggie Smith and look up Sophia Loren. Look up the difference between those two women. Each of them gorgeous in their own right. Each of them substantive and have much to bring forward. That's what I'm getting for. That's your homework assignment. That's just... Straight from the pages here. One page, the other page. They are not meant to be the same. That's complete. Wow, that was big. Yeah, the woman in total control of himself, both of them are. Both of them are. Um, yeah, look up Dame Maggie Smith. Incredible. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had a, a celebrity reference, but that's what came through. So, yeah, that's what we got. Okay, Kelly, the year ahead. Okay. All right, we will see what's going on for Kelly. Just a second. Let me get some water. All right. Hang on, Kelly. You're getting a few strange decks at the, at the onset, and I'm not sure why, but that's okay. Okay. What we've got for you, Kelly, you're welcome. You are so welcome. Yeah, you're welcome, Vita. Okay, Kelly, I've got, I'm not sure what this one is called. It's maybe like the shadow this, that, I don't know, but it reminds me of tin types, old fashioned tin types. For the year ahead for Kelly, we're going into this. And then we've got the ghosts, which usually comes in for a longing. This is David Corsi, the ghosts. So we're gonna get those and then we're gonna do the full year ahead with the Astro Matrix Tarot. So we're gonna go around, but I like to go in usually with one deck to see what's the crux of the situation and then start the, the calendar around. So that's what we're doing. No problem, Vita. I'm sure you're good for it. No problem. Okay. Kelly, what is this in the tin types? I'm getting, I need two tin types, one for you and one for an ancestral lesson, and then the ghosts are going to come in. Eight of wands, ace of cups. Okay. Eight of Wands is coming in looking like this. The butterfly is ready to emerge and there's much that um, she has to navigate in, around, and through. It's If you think of a butterfly navigating flaming wands or sticks, sticks, sticks navigating, the flame needs to come through. Huge, huge, huge. The Ace of Cups. The Ancestors is offering something about the butterfly's lesson to you. Gosh! I 
think I left my tea cards downstairs. I didn't leave my Lenormand cards downstairs. The ancestor is saying it's in the leaves. It's in the leaves. It's those branches that are um, fiery, fiery. There's leaves on them. I need to get the tea leaves for you. Wow. All right. We're going to see what's going on. Hang on. Now, there is an Australian woman named Karen, and she does teacups and tea leaf reading, and it lines up very much like Lenormand decks do, so this is why we're going to the Lenormand decks. We're going to the Healing Light Lenormand. Let's see what the message is here. It's something about you learning discernment, you learning how to navigate, you learning how to fly. The ancestors got your back on this. There's a gift coming in that an ancestor shares with you. It's like she would pour some of her tea into your glass. Yes. Some of her wisdom will be poured into you. Um, she's pouring into your vessel some of this wisdom. This is the card of the gift, the gift of the bouquet. This is the card of the flowers. It's a beautiful gift she's sharing. It's a gift of beauty to be understood, and it is very much to do with um, understanding and having the wisdom. Flowers from the past. Flowers from the past, dried flowers, and the maker of the tea sits with the one that she brews the pot for. Sits with the emotion that, and sits in the brew in order to know that which she takes in. In order to know the flavor of the tea, one must sit with it and let it steep, let it be. Let the flavor flow through you as it did with me. Understand and honor the tea. This is what, this is what I'm getting for you. This is huge, huge, huge. Okay. Let's see what the ghosts want to bring forward. This is the flowers of the tea. Specifically, I'm being shown little little daisies, little daisies. It's little joys, little daisies, and um, chamomile will help you with a sense of discernment. This is coming in with little daisies like loves me, loves me not. Coming in with little daisies like chamomile, like literally you should be having chamomile tea before you meditate or before you go into the zone with spirit to get Clarification. You might even pick up some Lenormand cards or something that is to do with reading tea leaves. I think that's a gift that she had that she wants you to have. Okay, what else is coming through on this? The ghosts. This is David Corsi. No wonder the ghosts wanted to come in so strong. I'm getting a menacing gin, and that's not what this means. This means the devil, but I'm getting a menacing gin. This is like a menacing ancestor, somebody that menaced her in the past, that you will have a similar lesson from the menacing male is what I'm getting, the, um, the menacing gin. So somebody that does promises, promises like a genie, but is kind of like a bad genie. <laughs> that's what I'm getting, the menacing gin. Okay, what else? The sisterhood will carry you forward and offer the gifts that you are to be celebrated, to be celebrated, to be celebrated. No longer tolerate the gin and no longer be in the space where you are only tolerated like the furniture. You build the furniture. You are not the furniture. Be tolerated, be celebrated. Lift the cup, lift the cup. There is a sisterhood around you and there is more than just one bestie. There are multiple besties. This indicates a three, but it could be even more than this that need to be in your circle of support. This is what's coming through. Okay. Let's see what's going on in the year ahead. I'll keep the ghost's quilts at hand, but let's see what's going on. We're going to start with June because that's where we're at and we're not quite finished with it. If I felt the need to start with July, I'd be starting with that. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. Okay. Two of cups in June. Two of Cups. Let's see what's going on. With the lesson of the menacing gin, part of the lesson is for you to do smarter and wiser in how you do your love relationship, your romantic relationship. We've got June, July, August, September, October, November. Get these up and over here. Cords over here. December, January, February, March, April, May. Okay. This, I guess, here for now. Now I'll show you the, what's going on down here so you can see. Okay, uh, hopefully you can see it pretty good here. All right, so we've got June right here. 
June with the Two of Cups, July with the Emperor, making a decision where you're going to be in charge of how things go. And this upside down would be a very egoic emperor, somebody that reigns like with the iron fist is super, super rigid in response to this male energy on its head or upside down. It's too many rules, too much structure, and yielding that over to this one is not going to serve. So in July, you're going to have a lesson, and you're going to need to be more discerning about the masculine energies around you, not just the romantic energies around you, but the masculine overall. I want some clarification on this. Hang on. Well, that's quick enough. It jumped right out. This is the hermit. This is looking within, going for the higher, darker lesson of the soul or the, the trickier lesson to get to. Don't go for the flash in the pan. This one needs to be the seeker. This is telling us also in September something big is coming in. So we're in July here. The masculine energy is kind of on its head. The masculine energy you exude also may be on its head. Be very aware. It's needing to welcome the feminine a little bit more. The Queen of Wands is coming up in August. Very, very fiery, beautiful firebrand energy. Beautiful, beautiful receptivity. Don't entertain every guest that comes to your door is what I'm getting. She is the most approachable, most sensual. But she doesn't have time for idiots or fools, much like the Queen of Swords. She's not going to suffer them. She's a little bit more warm, a little bit more friendly. But because she is so confident, sometimes she attracts that which is not necessary. She doesn't need gasoline on the fire, right? Right. She needs more stillness. She needs more of that Queen of Coins energy coming through. She does not need the King of Wands energy just yet. She needs more of the Coins energy. The King of Wands is in opposition over in January. If she wants to be the ruler of her own self, rather than just receptive, receptive, she needs to honor the Divine Masculine in herself and write this. The, whatever this is needs to be turned right side up by January, okay? We're getting the Nine of Pentacles here. Spend some time in your garden getting the luxury time. August, spend some time, then reach out, then reach out. The time isn't there just yet. The time to be in this space where there's luxury and leisure time in August is really heavy with it. September kicks in. September had that hermit reference here. And in cards that are laid down and around the circle, you get the Wheel of Fortune. There's divine timing on something and you are impatient for it. Even if the emperor or the king sends out a whole navy and says, I need to know the information, I need it now, damn it. If the Navy hasn't had time to cross the ocean, to cross the big wide ocean, how the hell is he going to get accurate information? This is what I'm getting. There's two clocks working on here. Two clocks. There's something about this that you need to get more information in September before you can make a decision. October. Knight of Cups. This is you questing the grail for self. Do not put this sense of validation, sense of planning, sense of worth in somebody else's hand. You must be the writer here. You must be. Quit externalizing somebody else's thing to define yourself is what I'm getting. Now, you'll know what this is about. You might know a shade of it now. You'll know more of it in October for certain and for sure you will. And in October, the way you define your own quest, your own thing you want to carry forward, what matters to you, what, what lights you up, and what is your emotional idea of wonderfulness. This is what you need to be aware of for yourself because you're calling it big in November. I want to see the clarification on here. It doesn't get more clear than that. Your cup is your cup and it's being offered. You need to reach it and have it in your hand. You need to quest for the grail for your own fucking self. This is not for somebody else to bring and be like, hello, the universe already has given you the clues on this. You've had time to see clearly. You need to be in charge of what it is you decide to go after emotionally, spiritually. It's up to you to do this. You are not to put this in somebody else's care. This is for you to do. You need to be with the T. She's coming through again. I'm getting something that's kind of like an M name off of this. And I don't know if it's Myra or Myrtle or what. But I'm getting M. M. The letter M is coming through with this very grandmother auntie kind of energy from generations back and it doesn't feel like it's mary but it could be but it doesn't feel like it's mary i mean that's just like telling you a j name of jane give me a break but this is what i'm getting okay let's see what's going on in november for you 
put those down. November is right here. All the colors are coming through. You're learning how to read. You know, they would say, oh, people know how to read the tea leaves in November. It means they have a sense of seeing the future, a sense of a little bit of understanding. Clear cogs are coming in for you. Clear knowing is coming in for you. And learning how to read it in the multiple cups. Also, bliss is coming in. There's also something, there's um disruption times two. So something that is challenging to grow and they get completion. So you have it in a five and in a five. It's going to be something that's a little bit distracting, disruption in a flash, and then another one. And it doesn't feel like it's a huge big deal as far as the disruption. What feels like the thing is strong is when you know you've got five here, five here. So that collectively you have 10. Collectively you will have the balance. Okay, that's November, December. Beautiful, beautiful card. Beautiful. This is six of coins. This is when the universe is giving you something and you have the balance. Just like in her hand, she has two coins. It wouldn't surprise me at all if we were to see this happen, this woman would give to each of them, not just choose one or the other, like we see it sometimes depicted. She would give to each of them and then she would pull from the sky and give down more and draw down more. This is huge generosity and being the giver in December. It doesn't mean bank for yourself. It means letting your spirit be generous, giving when you can give, offering and offering. And the well doesn't run dry when you offer. When you offer with the right energy, you offer with the right energy it comes from a place where you know how to honor your own emotion this was happening in december in january now in january we have shifted from the queen of wands to the king the queen came in in august and in january comes the king this is the balancing of the divine masculine and feminine and the king has strong leadership energy when he's in his right self and he is in january this doesn't feel like another person this feels like you understanding how to handle your confidence and you learning this other lesson and having it added as a layer in. You will lead. This is learning you are doing the ride, learning you're leading. This is the experience between October and January. January, you lead. What is this leadership stuff about in January? Look at this. Ten of cups and ten of cups. You are learning how to do groupings. You are learning what is disruptive, how it harmonizes with other things. Here you clearly see all the rainbow harmonized. Here you see the happy, happy family. You're learning how to co-opt things and grow things together. Some people read this card as families that are blended families and step families because the colors are not the exact same family colors all through. Some people read it this way as a blending together. There's a harmonizing. And if you think of, um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to give you freaking Brady Bunch. You think of the Brady Bunch story, and it's like I, idealistic, perfect, perfect, stupid, goofy TV sugar, right? But they blended families together. That was the thing. And then there was always this um, overbearing kind of sugary moral lesson. There's something about that where you're blending lessons. It doesn't have to be sugary and overbearing. You just have to show by example, lead by example, and the lesson will be understood in January. That's what I've got. There's no need for being overbearing at all. The, the King of Wands is inspiring, not overbearing. That's what you need to remember in January, February. Two of Swords, Two of Swords. Choices, choices, and the decision. And look, you're trying to logic your way through this decision. Please, please, in February, remember your own emotional guidance system. Remember your own higher self. Let's see what else is coming up in February. The two rulers coming together, balancing, coalescing. Two rulers coming together with the higher wisdom and the knowledge. The vessels and watering not just the water, but watering the ground. Drawing from the water, watering the ground, knowing where to put this. This is hope and healing. This is making a choice where healing comes through. This is huge. The emotional healing that comes through this reminds you of your dream. Reminds you of how you want to go forward in February. It's a being aligned with your true north more than anything else in February. Now in March... We have Sneaky Pete the Thief, a.k.a. Stephanie calls him Robin Hood. It's knowing what you need to do to cover your ass to take off and not get yourself dead. It's knowing what you're willing to risk and what you're willing to stand for. This one is not going to stand for mistreatment. He's going to get out of there and get out of there safely, and he's going to be stealthy about it. There's an element of stealth that people see in a bad light. This guy is kind of the opposite of the fool. He's stealthy. He's going to know what he's walking into, walking away from, and he's knowing how to do better so he can land okay. This is what I'm getting for March for you. April and May, we've got the lovers and the knight, or excuse me, the king of swords. March doesn't feel as significant as April. The lover's energy is here. 
put that one down because they've got the nudie tooties and I didn't sharpie them. What is the choice that you're making? The choice that you made in February about your dream, remember here, you had to make a decision, you were at the crossroads, is getting more pronounced, more amplified here. April. Holding your boundary, holding your ground. You learned this in March in a very logical, logical way, and you've done it. You've, you've achieved this. I want to show you that it's still the lovers, but you've achieved it. You've achieved this lesson of having the higher ground. You've gone to the higher ground and left some of the baggage behind. May, King of Swords. There's a renewal coming through. This is the time of the butterfly. This is the time of the butterfly. You've learned to discern the tea leaves. You'll have a whole year of learning how to read signs and synchronicities, the clear cogs opening up in the beautiful gifts. You, the fields will be full of abundant gifts. You won't fall for flattery. You won't fall for the nonsense. The pretty shiny things aren't going to be the thing that fools you. You are not going to fall for like fool's gold type of things anymore. You'll know how to navigate now. You'll have this lesson of strategy, of skill, of honoring your own emotions coming through. Huge, huge lessons coming through here. M wants through here. Where did I put those cards? One second, I'm trying to find those um, Lenormand cards that I just had. If I don't have them, I'll get another set. This is this is that Lenormand tea leaf reading card. Let me get another set. Old school, old school, down the wood way. And navigating through the woods. Old school, old school, down the wood way. Ha. Huh. The tower, something you build up. Now this one in Lenormand, the tower is very much different than what it is in tarot. In, in tarot, the tower is all about curveball, shit happening, destruction, destruction. Here's an institutional thing that you've built up over time. This is brick by brick, the things that you've built up and having the higher vantage point. This is the higher knowledge and wisdom coming in. This is something about the institution. If something is instituted or established, it's built, built, built. I would even almost throw this to a little bit of something that has happened where um, the Hierophant energy can come in, where he welcomes you in and invites you in and asks for you to layer your knowledge. Layered knowledge, shelter in the storm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Clear audios are giving me... Um, that song it says i want to know have you ever seen the rain coming down on a sunny day the reference is that song because you need to know when you see the rain coming how you discern that you'll know if it's going to be hurricane and batshit crazy or if you need to find shelter seek shelter it's you not just understanding that what you're seeing coming down at, at you ahead and around you is coming down and honoring and seeing that but it's also knowing where shelter is for you at that point knowing where you need to be knowing where you physically need to be that creates sanctuary and establishes this wisdom lesson coming through for you. This is asking also for you to be the vessel, the keeper of the gift. Again, getting the lesson of the wisdom from those who have fallen or gone before. Yeah, yeah, it's not such lofty thoughts. It's not such um, high on your own supply to think about how you want to bring this in. This is something that's going in that you're going to learn something about. This is just giving me September 6th and April 6th. I don't know what those dates are, but they're um, anchor points, um, bookends for some lessons for you. That's what I've got. Is there anything else that she needs to know? Understand you have the way, the ability to let the, 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 the gin, the masculine that's been a little bit toxic, be gone. 
to banish the jinn is what I'm getting. You have the ability to banish the jinn, send it on its way. And I'm getting again September 6th, April 6th. There's something about those dates for you. I'm not sure what that's about, but that's what's coming through. That's complete. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and your M relative, I, I don't know if it's Matilda, I have no idea. It's a really funny old, old M name, and it is not Mary, but it is like, Myrtle or Matilda or who knows. That's what I've got. This one is old, related, closely related. She might be directly through your genealogical line. Uh, 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 I take that back. Um, I'm getting Zuzu, which is uh, my grandmother's friend. Arzula was the neighbor lady. Very, very crone energy. Very, very, like, I wish somebody could have taken a picture of her or, or drawn a picture of her old wise lady that lived next to my grandmother's house. This is what I'm getting. I'm getting the Zuzu reference. She's had to have been dead at least 50 years, guys. Yeah, and her name was Arzula, and she had this kind of funny name, and Zuzu energy is coming through. So this M is referencing Arzula, is referencing somebody that's adjacent to this old energy. That's what I've got. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's what I got. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Mildred, it could be Mildred. If anybody ever watched um, Remington Steele, old show, old character, Doris Roberts played Mildred Krebs. I loved her. She was fabulous. She was so good. So yeah, it, it could be anything like that. You'll know. All right. I think the list is clear right now. So if this is the last call, this is the last call for the list. If you want to get on, great. If not, that's okay. And I probably will be on... I'll be on Monday for sure, but probably Sunday. Sarah England. Uh, Sarah England. Okay, you need guidance for a job. Sure, sure, honey. Sure. You've been in here multiple times, multiple times. All right. Give me just a second to clear the deck so we'll take a look, okay, honey? All right. I, I mean, I have so many decks to put away, you guys. It's ridiculous in here. I might need to expand out. Like, if you look behind me. There's like 15 crates and probably 50 something little boxes like these little boxes of 10. I mean, there's a lot of cards in here. But yeah, we'll look for Sarah England before we go. Yes, Remington, not really constructed either. <laughs> okay, all right. I, I'm just gonna have to put these up here for Sarah England. Let's see what's going on. One second. All right, all right. It is as if that there is a slip in the shoulder. I sometimes have, I sleep like this all the time. And sometimes this will tweak or have a slip. And it just did as I was reaching for the cards. It's a reminder here. It's a reminder of what you're reaching for, reaching for. And don't get cramps on the reaching, on the reaching, on the reaching. It feels like in job terms, it would be waiting for a long time for acknowledgement or for promotion that may not be there. Except for you keep reaching, you keep reaching and you're, you're tweaking something. Like, you know, in TV, sometimes you see people throw their back out and they're just doing what might be their regular thing. Be careful in what it is that you're doing in your job and you're reaching, reaching. Make sure you're not being um, let on is what I'm getting. Let's take a look at anything else for Sarah England. Just real quick, we'll look and we'll close the show. I want to look at five cards for you on this, Sarah. Yeah, it's time for you to move on, baby. I'm not sure what's going on, but death is coming out clear of the day. Something is over-ended. It's time to move on. The Queen of Cups, you actually know better. This is the one that values her losses and then redreams again. Knight of Cups, time for you to quest for the grail for yourself. This looks like a job transition. Job change. Now, when we see this ending, it could be the end of waiting for promotion, promotion, and you're adding something in. Or it could be you're like going to exit stage right and be like, Okay, I need to give my notice. I cannot stand doing this any longer. I need to give my notice. This doesn't mean burn bridges. It doesn't mean tell your boss to fuck off. But it does mean it's a definite end. Seven of Wands is talking about holding your boundaries, holding your boundaries. And this is giving me Seven of Wands energy. But I want to see. It's the nine I'm actually seeing. This is resilience and defending. And it's kept you up late at night to have to defend, to have to defend, to have to defend. Subconsciously. 
you're ready to move forward from this and um, you've been ready for a while yet. There's huge absolute clarity on this, sort of truth on this. Yeah, it's time, it's time. This is what you're clear about. The dreams are trying to move you forward. It is time for you to move forward. So rather than reach for something and get the twinge and get the pain, you're reaching for something new and able to pull it towards you. That's what's going on with this. That's complete, sweetie. That's what I got for you. So I think that kind of sums it up for today. So are we clear on the list? Kim? This is clear? Kim, if you tell me the list is clear again, then we'll just draw a rando card and call it a day. You understand and you work for that job. You know what that's about. Good, good. Yeah, it felt like the time to take. Ah, thanks for being here today, Chad. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, we'll draw one rando card and then we're going to call it a day. So let's draw a rando from one of the newer decks. And this one I think is the soul self or the journey to the soul self. Very modern art, but let's just draw one. You're welcome, Sarah. All right. Five of Pentacles. This is when we feel in poverty or in lack. And look at what she's doing. She's walking away. She doesn't seem like she's walking hunched over or stooped or feeling poor, poor, pitiful me or not enough. She's walking towards the sun. This is a very beautiful rendition of the Five of Pentacles. Usually we see them out in the cold, outside the church. This is the same energy, walking away, but during the summer, walking towards something during solstice and leaving something clearly behind. This is something we need to let go of. The little the little thinking, the little mindedness. I'm talk, not talking narrow mindedness, but feeling like we have too little or feeling we're out in the cold when we're not. Walk towards the sun, you're walking towards the gifts. You're walking towards the new thing that will actually be more sheltering and be more warm for you. That's what I've got. That's complete. That's beautiful. All right, guys. It's been two hours plus, so I think we're going to let it go for today. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I love doing this. So I hope to see you guys later. I'll be on for sure on Monday. Sunday, I'm not sure of. And tomorrow, I'll probably be building furniture. <laughs> so we'll see. Okay, guys. See you later. Bye.